package from China. Oh man, it took really forever to get this thing here, but I wanted to make a review and I wanted to see it for myself because this thing looks pretty cool. The packaging itself, they did improve it in the last couple of years and I'm very pleased to see so. But the rest of things you need to know. So the first, let's do... Oh crap. Okay, but... <clears throat> but what I wanted to show you guys... <laughs> All right. What I think is pretty cool that the layout itself, it looks amazing. So yeah, the, the design is more like personal space, but I do like it itself. But there are some things that I don't like and here it comes. Yep, here comes the D-pad fetish again. So the device itself comes with a 5.1 Android based system. 32 GB of internal storage, I'm guessing this is on CF card. We're having 1 GB of RAM. We're having 4 inch display that has resolution 8 on by 480. Then we're having micro USB for connection and 2500 milliamp battery inside. Because with the D-pad, they messed it up big time. Yes, yeah, seriously, the design itself is good, but it is very clickish, super long travel, and it doesn't feel right. And I can tell you, it plays awful. It plays really awful, so they basically messed it up. But the other thing is, with the analog stick, the slider that I accidentally pulled off, is that they are similar like the PlayStation Portable, the PSP, PSP? like the PSP my friends and this thing is not bad at all it feels quite nice I did play a lot with it when testing out this product so now we're having more like we hate the d-pad and we love the analog stick so at the right side we're having the analog stick a b x y and of course over here we're having the on and off switch and you can put them in standby on well, the bottom of the handheld we can find two USB connections because we can use controllers on this device. We have the mic USB, an audio jack out and a reset button over here. And the switch over here, here you need to choose if you want to use the controllers or the controls of the system itself. I do like the looks of this device, but I can tell you the shell itself is not the best. It's made of plastic and the motor weight will come from the battery on the back. On the top we can see we're having the HDMI connection that we're going to try out to see how it works. And of course we're having the CF card over here. At the top this is also a setback in my opinion. We're only having two shoulder buttons. And yeah, for the people who just want to play some more like 32-bit stuff like the PlayStation 1, you need to have four shoulder buttons. So that's just a big bummer. Here you can see we're having the two speakers over here. Let's open up this hatch and let's see if we can open it up. Ooh. The screw was very tight. As you can see over here, they are just using a basic battery in here. This is not more like the BL5C or the thing you have seen in different videos. Yeah, this is what you're going to get. So if this thing gets broken, you need to replace it. There are some numbers on it, so they are quite easy to find on AliExpress. So this is not going to be a deal breaker, in my opinion. But let's open it up and let's see what we're going to get inside and how did they assemble everything. I'm very curious about this. So let's see, I did remove most of the screws, but I think most of them are just stuck or just need to have a couple of turns for getting loose. Right, I think you need to remove the backplate if you want to remove the battery itself. Let's see. Oh man, this is really annoying. He is. Nope, you need to remove the battery itself. As you can see, it comes with a basic connector. Okay, let's open it up. Ooh, all the screws come out. Yay! So that's what we're going to get inside. As you can see over here, we're having one big PCB that holds the socket. And in the socket, we can see that we're going to have the rock chip mainboard. This is just the chip they are going to use for a lot of these handhelds nowadays, the RK3128. It's quite powerful, but mm, it's still lacking some performance when it comes to, let's say, the later systems like Sega Dreamcast, PSP. So this is something you need to take consideration. Very easy to replace. So I'm very curious if there comes a new rock chip PCB that we can just plug and play, replace it and upgrade the system. That will be a very cool feature in the future that the Chinese give us more like a handheld. And in the end, you can upgrade it yourself. So what I do like about the feature of the Cool Baby is the light up Cool Baby logo. Yeah, that's what we call Cool Baby. But when you take a close look at the display itself, it looks pretty good. It's an IPS display, so you have this very good V-angle. 
but I did see that it's not the best and the brightest version I have seen before. It's still a very tiny display and that is something that you need to take consideration while you're going to get a cool baby, or maybe not. So the device itself is based on Android and it gives us more possibilities. The menu itself feels a little bit choppy in my opinion and not the best. So as you can see over here we have quite some different support. I always need to search where is my cursor, oh the cursor is over there. We have a PlayStation, all the other stuff like 8-bit, 16-bit. What I do like about it that we have an Atari if I'm seeing it correctly. So there are some different systems that you don't see very often, Game Gear, Turbo Graphics. Here and there there are some new things that they apply to the system that has support for. But in general I don't like the menu and it's very choppy. So when you're pressing a, a or B it, it doesn't uh, make any sense at all. You need to press start and then you're going to get an extra menu and can boot up a game. What I really like about the handheld is the home button. That is a button you don't have on every single handheld. Uh, you can just go from the game back to the main menu. It takes a couple of seconds to let's say reboot the system or just close the game, close the emulator and then go to the main menu. Alright, so you can see that this game runs very well and PlayStation 1 will not be in common nowadays with the Chinese handheld or most of them. I can see that this game runs very smooth. The sound itself is not that great of a system, but it does the job. Okay, so let's see how this is working. Okay, it still has an old emulator because of glitches. Wow, it's freaking unbelievable that we can do a move with a stupid D-pad. You can see N64 is not perfect at all. It just has the same problems like all the other systems that we've used. Okay, so let's try an arcade game. This will not be an issue at all. It's because a lot of let's say older systems have no problem running these games. So I already mentioned that, that the games will not run perfectly with the, from the PC and this is a great example. As you can see over here this game runs very choppy. There will be some games will have decent amount of FPS that you can enjoy them. But in general, PSP is just a no-go for a system like this. Okay, so we have the option to add our own apps. Apps, yes, we can do that because by pressing start on this option, we can see that we're having here the option to boot up an emulator. And I or I just missed it out, but I did see there was a regain cost on the device itself. We can boot it up if we want to, and you can basically go into the browser mode and add your own Dreamcast game. But take consideration that this will not be the best solution combined with this handheld, and most of the games will not run perfectly. So when you're looking at the plug and play for the HDMI TV out, it works like a charm. You don't need to do anything, just plug in the cable and you're ready to go. And as you can see, the image looks very nice and sharp. And when it comes to the express ratio, as you can see here, I just wanted to mess around with it with my television and you can just see it works like a charm. So even with full screen, it will force it back to four by three. So that's quite interesting. All right, so the cool baby, the Android version. And I can say that that I really like the approach of the system, how it looks and what they want to achieve with it. But the final result is not that great. When you're looking at the D-pad, the way how it plays, missing out shoulder buttons. Yeah, I can already tell you this is one of my least favorite handhelds in this evasion of handhelds. So I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell and let me know in the comments what do you think of this. And I will see you in the next video.